Right then, welcome to everyone here. We are starting bang on time. Uh, that clock is always a couple of minutes fast, just to keep us on our toes, which is great. So, great to see everyone here. I think we're all regulars, aren't we now? But uh, bring a friend next week and let's see multiply. A few notices, obviously the Sunday Gospel Evening Service. Do join us. We're going to have our third one this week. And we're expecting to see this place packed. We're the, one of very few churches in the area offering a Sunday evening service. And it's good when the saints can come together and meet in this way. Um, also on the cards, Saturday the 30th of July, we've booked out the Redditch Baptist Church for a half day of prayer for this town and surrounding area, the churches and the nation. So if you can come, 9am to 9pm, we're going to have prayer, praise, worship. Come for a small part of it, or come for the whole day and just soak and bask in God's presence. Bring your lunch, bring to, you know, a flask if you want, uh, a flask of coffee that is, or tea. And uh, join us in that prayer, praise and worship. All the other activities that are going on in the week, I think you already know. Bible study tonight, 6 till 7, and all the other bits. Saturday the 30th of July is the half day of prayer. 30th. Yeah. Sorry, so, I couldn't decide whether you said 13th or 30th. Oh, sorry, 30th. 3 0. Always pull me up if I'm not uh, pronouncing things or lack of pronunciation. Okay. So, with that in mind, uh, could I ask, uh, please, for Brian, could you open the service in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again. Lord, we come and meet each other. Come now, Lord, to meet with you. And Father, we just pray, Lord, for those who may be on their way. And Lord, you bring them along safely. Remember, Lord, those who are Still, Lord, in need of touch in their bodies. And without Lord, we've lost the ones. Father, we just pray, Lord, you can glorify in this place. Your name, Lord, shall be heard throughout this town. Lord Jesus, you are the one. You say, men and women, the only one. And Lord, we need to be gospel to be given out clear. Lord, Jesus Christ is the answer to the problem of our sins. Mm -hmm. So Father, we just try your bless us, Lord, your view us, and have your own life. In the name of Jesus, Amen. 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 Praise God. And uh, an opening scripture today, which, uh, reading it, I felt was a, a strange opening scripture, but we'll turn to it, we'll read through it, and I'm sure it will touch and speak to many. Uh, Psalm 69. 36 verses of it, but Psalm 69. And we'll see what, can I, you know, what God has to say to us through it. Let me start reading from verse 1 and we'll move around the congregation. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths, where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters, the floods engulf me. I am worn out and calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail, looking for my God. Those who hate me without reason outnumber the hairs on my head. Many are my enemies without cause. Those who seek to destroy me. I am forced to restore what I did not steal. Verse 5. You, God, know my folly. My guilt is not hidden from you. Lord, you... Lord, the Lord Almighty, may those who hope in you not be disgraced because of me. God of Israel, may those who seek you not be put to shame because of me, for I endure scorn for your sake, and shame covers my face. I am a foreigner to my own family, a stranger to my own mother's children, for zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who insult you fall on me. When I weep and fast, I must endure school, but when I put on sackcloth, people make sport of me. Those who sit at the gate mock me, and I am the song of the drunkards. But I pray to you, Lord, in the time of your favour, in your great love, O God, 
answer me with your sure salvation, O King. Rescue me from the, from the mire. Do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me, from the deep waters. Do not let the flood waters engulf me, or the depth of swallow me up, or the curse its mouth over me. Answer me, Lord, out of the goodness of your love. In your great mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servants. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. Come near and rescue me. Deliver me because of my foes. You know how I am scorned, disgraced and shamed. All my enemies are before you. Scorn has broken my heart and has left me helpless. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I found none. They put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my drink. May the table set before them become a snare. May it become a retribution and a trap. May their eyes be darkened so they cannot see, and their backs be bent forever. Verse 24. Pour out your wrath on them. Let your fierce anger overtake them. May their place be deserted. Let there be no one to dwell in their tents. For they persecute those who wound, you wound, and talk about the pain of those you hurt. Charge them with crime upon crime. Do not let them share in your salvation. May they be blotted out of the book of life and not be listed with the righteous. I am in pain and distress. May your salvation, O oh God, protect me. I will praise God's name in song and yes. glorify him Amen. with thanksgiving. Yes. Verse 31. This also shall please the Lord. Catch him and up, so forth, and our horns and noodles. Then we shall see this on the plan. And your heart shall live and seek God. The Lord heareth the corrupt and despiseth not. At the end of the earth will try to see the living that move there. Verse 25. For God will say Zion and reveal the cities of Judah. Then people will settle there and possess it. The children of his servants will inherit it, and those who love his name will dwell therein. Yes, amen. Praise God. And maybe that's just an encouragement, a hope for those that are persevering and sharing God's word. And sometimes it can seem like folly for those that are deafened and hardened to the message. But God's word penetrates and we will see many come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in this place, in this time, and we'll see many share in that praise and glory. So if you're able to, please do stand. We're going to turn to uh, number 49. Of course, Whoa. we're absent of our musicians today, oh, yeah, our yeah, cool. guitarists, our singers. So we're going to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Yeah. Number 49, O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, and of course, how great thou art. Please stand if you can, and after three we'll sing. One, two, three. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the works thy hand hath made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior 
Your goodness will lead 
Let us now lie before God our prayers and petitions, knowing that God will answer in his way and in his time. Let us now pray. And Father, we thank you again that we can meet together here, Lord, to praise you, to sing your praise. And we are conscious, Lord, today that for a few away, and we remember Christine, Lord, as she get after her granddaughter. We think of John as well, Lord, and we, we pray for him, Lord, that uh, for, for the reason he can't be here. And Lord, we remember Martin and his funeral. We pray that you'll comfort him and strengthen him. And the Lord, your hand will be fine for good. But Lord, we, we long to see Greenwich saved. We love to see Greenwich visited by your power. We love to see, Lord, men and women, young people, boys and girls, coming to know you as Lord and Saviour. And we pray, Lord, that if this is just a part of that, that Lord, that you'll bless it. Father, we ask that you'll pour out of your blessing, send a revival, Lord, to this town. And we pray, Lord, that Redditch for God won't just be a motto, but it'll actually be something, Lord, that we experience and know. Father, have you I bless those, Lord, for other reasons who can't be here, Lord, some of my maybe as well. We pray for them. But we pray, Lord, above all, that you'll be honoured and glory for all these guys, and you'll draw them to yourself. We ask them for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for those wonderful words. I can trust in you yeah. alone. Yeah. Father God, we gather today because you are our shepherd yes. and we want to know you more. Yeah. We want to know you more because we want other people to yeah. know you through us. Yeah. Lord, as people pass, we pray indeed that maybe they'll catch a word of a song yes. or maybe they'll catch something that Joe says or a prayer that's been said. Father God, we pray indeed that you will draw them here to yourself. Because Lord, we don't come because of anything else. We come because we want to know you better. We come, Lord, because we want other people to realise that you are their friend, you are their saviour, you are their God. So Lord, be with us, we pray. We thank you for this great opportunity that in the middle of the week, we are able to just spend this time with you and with with each other, like-minded people. We thank you, Father, for the blessings that you give us yeah. in this place, yeah. as well as the blessings that you give us yeah. day by day. Yeah. So, Lord, just be with us, we pray. Be with those who are missing. Be with those who walk past. Yeah. Just send your fire, Father God, yeah. and make us realise that indeed, yes, we trust in you, you alone. Amen. 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 And Holy Lord, it's saying your word. The Lord and I have given us to men all the way we look to say. But Father, we do, Lord, this afternoon. And we go to do, Lord, to uplift and exalt the name of Jesus. Lord, so many people, Lord, use his name for the past Father, we thank you, Lord, in the name of the whole land of Jesus. He's the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Father, we just want, Lord, your name to be exalted, Lord, in this town, in our nation. But, Lord, perhaps even more importantly, in our lives. Okay. Father, we might show Jesus. Tell us, Lord, that we are the kids of bread and down the whole way. And now we look to the Bible, Lord, and look at us. Mm-hmm. Father, we just pray that we might, Lord, reflect something of the beauty and the love the Christ yeah. and the majesty Amen. of Jesus Christ. Father, uh, yeah. we just pray for those not here today, for whatever reason, we just bless them. Yeah. Amen. 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 that you will take hold of this meeting as you are already amongst us and we just pray Lord that you will take hold of everything that we are doing in this place to reach many and we just pray Lord for a multiplication in your way in your time Amen Wonderful, we're going to have David uh, come up and share the word with us Uh, yes please and uh, I'm going to go to the back there and see if I can uh, invite others to come in because that's what we're all about here we want to be inviting people week upon week but if you can't hear david we'll close the doors and uh, 
If you caught him, hey, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> I think that person in car park seven can hear. Yeah, that's right. right. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, both of you. This is good. This is lovely, isn't it? Beautiful day. Got weather coming the weekend. It's going to be the hottest of the year so far. We're together in the house of the Lord. Amen. And uh, we're building relationships. We're always grateful to the, to the Salvation Army for the use of their premises, which are be great premises. I came to these premises once a long time ago and fell in love with a Salvation Army girl. Oh. We went out for a while, but she didn't love me. Never oh. mind. <laughs> Silly woman. <laughs> Never mind. No taste. No taste at all. Uh, but seriously, it is good to be here. And I love, I love the, the sort of the, 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 the cross entwined around the, or the salvation side entwined around the cross. Let me say there is no salvation without the cross. There's no salvation without the blood of Jesus. Now, my message today is going to be quite serious. I don't apologise for that. I think there's a, I woke up one morning, four o'clock last week, knowing I was going to be speaking here today. And so, I was really praying about what I should bring. And so, let's have a word of prayer before we do anything else. Okay, let's just pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that your word is eternal, set in the heavens. We praise you, Lord, that your word is being fulfilled today all around us. We see, Lord, the end of times taking place because, Lord, we know that you are coming back soon. But Lord, in the meantime, we pray, help us, Lord, to be those who want to serve you, who long to serve you, and want to do that, Lord, which will honour you in Jesus' name. Bless your word to us, inspire us, challenge us, convict us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you've got your Bibles, and if you haven't, why haven't you? Uh, <laughs> Matthew 9. Matthew 9. And we'll start reading at verse 35. Okay. Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. To which we say, Amen. <coughs> well, again, Lord. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. I said this word today uh, would be challenging. I want it to be challenging. I know I'm used for that. It might be straight. It may well be that some of us go out thinking, well, has God spoken to me today? Because every time we read the word, every time we hear the message, we should be open to hear the word of God, but not only to hear the word of God, but to put it into operation. To let it be worked out in our How do you see the world? How do you see the world? How do you see, I'm not talking about the cosmology now, the world as a planet. I'm not talking about the geographical situations or the archaeological factors, but I'm talking about the world in the sense of people. People of the world. Amen. The earth is on which we live, but the people of the world. And so we need to ask ourselves, how do we see the people today? The businessman, your neighbour, the labourer, the um, single, single uh, mother who might be strong to make up a children, the housewife, the school children. How do you see them? So when I go into town, I see all sorts of people. Some of them in the flesh and in my natural, I wouldn't really want to have much to do with. But actually, the reason I'm asking the question is because we need to ask ourselves, how do we see the people around right about us? How do we see it? Why do we put this on? Why do we go down to Anna Valley Park and in the town centre? And that's part of the reason uh, is because of asking the question, how do we see the homeless man, the drug addict, the drunken. Think about it. I don't know how you see them, but I know how Jesus saw them. 
We read together that he had compassion because he saw the people as sheep and having no shepherd. Now there are many churches and there's many people, there are many ministers, but not a lot of shepherds. Let's get it clear, there are not a lot of shepherds. But Jesus saw them and he had compassion and he saw me he saw them as sheep with no shepherd. So I'm asking you again, how do you see the people in you live by? How do you see them? You know, one of the saddest things to me is looking around today, as far as I know, there's probably not more than maybe one person in this meeting who's not, who's an unbeliever. We should be seeking, we should be out there, we should be invited. Not just, I went to somewhere a few weeks back, uh, where it's Reading Life, and I don't even remember what it's called now, and I prayed before I, before I went that I'd actually be able to meet some people. I met five people, different people from different parts of the world, walking around, talked to them, sat on a bench, and I just shared with them the gospel of Jesus. Two of them, two of them, at their request, asked me to pray for their salvation. They gave their lives to Christ there, and I came out absolutely walking on air. What about what about the kite on the flown? But I, I walked on air. The other three I don't know. There was a Polish lady, there was a a, 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 a couple, oh and this couple who gave the lives to the Lord, somebody from uh, Albania, I think, but just to share the gospel and to share God's love and to share God's grace and mercy is what we are called to do. We don't put on meetings like this just because we want to have a nice time. We don't put meetings on like this because you want to see us and we want to see you and we have a lovely time of fellowship. I hope we do. It's lovely to see you all. It's lovely to see your smiling faces. Oh, is it with you? Okay, never mind. It doesn't really matter. But at the end of the day, we are here because we have a desire to bring people in under the sound of the word of God. Because if, if, as we heard the other week, how they, will they hear unless we go and tell them or unless they hear the word of God? So you said, sheep having no shepherds. Not the church, not a building, it's not events. It's not like doing all the things that we think are important. They are important, don't misunderstand me. And I don't want you to think that we shouldn't be doing those things. But actually, there's something more important. Can I just say this? Someone can have a full belly and go to a Christless eternity. Right? Got it? See where I'm coming from? But it's also important that we do do the social side as well as the spiritual side because the church and the world outside can be uh, almost like a shelter in the storm to bring people into a knowledge of Jesus Christ. So what are you doing? How do you see the people? If you see them in their true state, you'll see them outside of Christ, going to a Christless eternity. And can I say, uh, I don't care what you think about me, there's only one way to God and that's through Jesus. All right? you got a problem with that, then come and see me. Jesus is the only way. And the gospel we have is a gospel of love, it's a gospel of grace, it's a gospel of, that can change and transform people's lives. Now when Jesus said this, we have to realise he's the Lord of Lords. Amen. He's the King of Kings. Amen. He's the creator of the world. He's the upholder of everything by his power. The unchanging God. And he says that he saw the people as having no shepherd. Filled with compassion. This is the Jesus who wept over Jerusalem. Do you weep over the need of our nation? Do you weep over the need of your people, your neighbours, those you live by, those maybe you live with? Do you weep? Do you, do you pray for them? Do you travel out until they start to be coming into the place where God wants them to be? That's what we need to be doing. He sees their, their lives and he sees them having no shepherds. There are lots of churches in Greenwich, lots of churches, buildings. There's lots of things going on. But actually, we don't even look, need to look at those things. We, look, we need to look at every man and woman. Those who have been going past here already this afternoon and hearing the singing and hearing a little bit of maybe what's, what's going on. And Jesus wept over Jerusalem. He said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I long to gather you like a, like a hen would gather the chicks. But you would not. That's Christ weeping over Jerusalem. When do we weep? When do we cry? When do we travel? When we see our nation and the people around about just go to a Christless eternity. And all we can do is say hello, hello, welcome. This is Jesus, who is the Good Shepherd. John chapter 10, he says these words, I am the Good Shepherd. Then he goes on saying the Good Shepherd will give his life for the sheep. There he is here, and there's a, a unique relationship here. There's a unique experience of a shepherd who becomes the sheep. 
It becomes the Lamb, and when he's the Lamb of God, he takes away the sins of the world. So actually, the shepherd also becomes a sacrifice. But why did he come? He didn't just come to be a shepherd. He is a shepherd. Actually, the word shepherd is the same shepherd word as you see, pastor, poiman. No, I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. It's poiman, P-O-I-M-E-N. It means shepherd. That's what the pastor is supposed to be. Shepherding, caring, visiting, tending the flock. Uh, but I'm also, I, I like to think I'm a pastor with a heart for soldier men and women, young children, boys and girls. I know Joe's got more of an evangelist, evangelistic zeal as well. So we need to be in a place where, you see, I worked on a farm for three years, nearly four years, and sheep are not stupid. Some people think they're not stupid, but they're, not, they're very stubborn. And they'll do it their own thing. It's like the world, actually. They're just like the world. They can be very stubborn. And a ram, if you, if you upset him, he'll go for you, particularly if you're on his territory and he thinks you might be sort of trying to get too close to his, uh, uh, to his brides or on his ladies. He'll often give you, will charge you. I don't mean five pounds, but he'll charge you, he'll book you, he'll get his horns down. And we need to be a people who understand that we have a desire and a longing to see men and women come to Christ. This is what Jesus came to do. Jesus is not just a good shepherd, the Bible also says he's the great shepherd of the sheep. And he saw the people with through eyes of, of pity and compassion because it says that he saw them as having no shepherd. And yet the one who's the greatest shepherd was there and had visited them and they did not recognise him. The shepherd blessed him, the shepherd there, the shepherd who became a sacrifice. Remember? In the Old Testament, they sacrificed the sheep. But Jesus was the shepherd, but he was also the Lamb of God. And that's a unique description. I've never known a shepherd who became a sheep. But Jesus did. Yeah. But he became a sheep to save those who were lost. Because his shepherd heart went out to them. So how do you see the beggars? And can I use the expression, the scroungers? The hangers on. I get on my nerves as well sometimes, eh? You know, particularly they come, and I'm talking to somebody and they come to talk to me. But we have to see beyond their, 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 their state. We have to see the true nature of where they are heading without God and without Christ. That's why we do this. There's a stirring in our spirits in these days like never before to be those who see beyond the, just the people and see their need and see their longing and have to be those whose hearts are breaking for the need of our town and our people and our nation. People can be lost, they can be lost in a lovely big home. They can be lost with all the luxuries. They can be lost with all, that they, all the, the, uh, the modern day technology. They can still be lost souls. And condemned even with uh, uh, coming to a, a, a meal, they can go out still unchanged. And yet the longing of Jesus is hard to why he wept over Jerusalem and why he sees them here and he sees them as those who have no shepherd and his heart was going out and he's really calling in, in, in a sense that they might come to him. Save the sheep. To make sure the lambs are safe and well. You see, to turn around, that's in the, in, the, in the parable that Jesus gives us, he talks there about the shepherd going out for the one sheep that was lost and the 99 were safe. Sadly, today, it's almost like the one is safe and the 99 are lost, but the, de the, but the desire and the need is still the same. It's to go and to save and to bring men and women. Yes, the first two, first two letters of gospel is go. And so I mean, the gospel's old-fashioned. You mean good news? Yeah, I do. And what's the first two letters of good news? No. Thank you. Yeah. The Samaritan in Luke chapter 10. He wasn't the religious day. He, he, he wasn't religious. He wasn't the priest who passed by. How often do we pass by? And he wasn't the Levite. You're talking about the leaders of the church. You're talking about the religious people. And you're talking about the people of the Lord who were bringing into being all the things that they thought were important. But it was a Samaritan. It was someone who was a stranger who took pity on this man on the side of the road and went and helped him and took him to safety. him. Now, we can never save a soul, but we can introduce people to the Good Shepherd. We can't save us all, but we can do all we can. Wouldn't it be great if next week every one of these seats is filled because we've brought someone in under the sound of the word of God? They won't all get saved, we know that. They won't all have a life changing experience with Christ. But you know the Bible says, the truth shall set men and women free. If they're not eating the truth, they're still in bondage and still in darkness. I'm going to finish in a moment. 
Who said Amen? We have to be a people who see the state of our nation, the real state. Whether they're politicians, whether they're leaders, whether they're celebrities, whether they're the man or woman in the street or the beggar or the, or the drunkard, without Christ they are all heading to a Christless eternity. Let's get it right, they're heading to hell without God and without hope and without mercy. Although the mercy is there, but we need to go and tell men and women. And I like it what he says here. The harvest is plenty, but it's out there. The labourers are the few. We're labouring, we're stretching ourselves, we're straining, we're struggling at times to do something, not because we just want to meet together, but because we know that the men and women whose lives will be changed and blessed forever, forever and forever when they come to know Christ. I'm going to finish with this. If today you had the opportunity to speak to someone about their soul. I remember reading a man called John Nelson Park. He had a big church in Manchester. And he, he was a great evangelist, but the church was the biggest church in Britain at one time. Over 2,000 met every Sunday. Pentecostal church, Sevens of God. And he, he, he challenged the people one day. He said, what about your next door neighbour? He says, go and take the trap. Go and take the liver. Go and take the gospel. And he said, I said, Milton had one. Maybe I haven't done a moment. As your butcher had one. As your next door neighbour had one. As your window cleaner had one. Then he came in and said, as anybody had one. And that's the challenge today we're, we're faced with, is seeking to bring this lost generation back to Christ. How do you see the world? How do you see the people? I know how Jesus saw them, but he came to die, to plead, to go to Calvary that they might know his forgiveness, his mercy, and be ready for the kingdom of heaven. And that's all I'm going to say. And that's all we're here. All right, Joe. Six, seven, uh, five. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And uh, six, seven, five. And just as we're finding that, as David said, the labourers are few. There was a certain group of individuals today, and I won't mention them on camera, but they were out on the street corners, in their twos, in their pairs, professing a gospel. And there was two or three sets of them. They're out there doing it. We need to present the one gospel. We need to bring people to a saving knowledge of Christ. Others are leading people astray. And we need to correct that. 675, if you're able to, please stand for seek ye first the kingdom of God. Let us sing. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia.
favourite when we meet in this place of mine. 907, and let us sing, since Jesus came into my heart. It's always carried well by this side of the congregation. Let's see if this side can do as well, yeah. Since Jesus came into my heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been brought since Jesus came into my heart. And I have light in my soul which so long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart.
take everything to God in prayer. And I'm going to share something. One of our little junior saints in this church, in this congregation, did just that the other day. Had a problem with, dare I say it, we are recording, someone was being a bit of a nuisance, a bit of a bully, and he took it to God in prayer. They prayed for that individual and the situation turned round. And I share that today on camera for those watching remotely, but for everyone here today, because last night I shared that as a testimony on behalf of the young person who remained nameless. But as I was with a group of youngsters, it opened up that all of those eight youngsters wrote down a list of names. I was only invited to this session. Wrote down a list of names and prayed for all those people, knowing that God will change the situation in his time and in his way. But what a powerful testimony from this assembly that went and touched those eight youngsters who then prayed for a myriad of individuals. And we will see God change their hearts and bring them closer to him. What a testimony and what uh, an expectation in the heavenlies as we see those individuals come to know him as Lord and Saviour. So, with that in mind, we pray with expectancy. We pray for healing and deliverance. Is there anyone who would like some prayer later today? Yep, that's one. Anyone else? Just raise your hand. No, that wasn't a, wasn't a raised hand. No, not today. Okay, lovely. Well, we'll in a minute we'll close the service in prayer and we'll move into a time of refreshment. But those who are willing uh, will lay hands on and pray around um, our brother there. So I'm going to ask, Dawn, would you please close us in prayer? And before Dawn comes up to close us in prayer, a reminder, Bible study tonight, 6 till 7. If you've enjoyed worshipping and praising God, 6.30 till 8.30 on a Thursday, we have our community choir and our worship groups. And to remind you of the offertory at the front, if you'd like to give to the work of this church, sending out workers and reaching many men, women and children for Christ. We're now closing prayer. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll be praying God's will into all those situations. Kenya, other areas of the world, God's will. If God's will, it'll be done. That's what we've just said. Praise God. Dawn, if you could close us in prayer, please. So we pray. <coughs> Father God, it's good that we've been able to come into your house. Lord, we thank you because you are all that we need. Lord, there are many situations, there are many people who need you in a very practical way just now. Yeah. And Lord, indeed, we think of those who are unable to gather once again. We ask that in some way you will make them a blessing up to them. Father, we think of that orphanage in Kenya. Lord, you know that situation. Lord, you know what to do. And we just pray, Father God, that if it's your will, then finance will be found and those young people will be helped yeah. beyond measure. We believe, Father God, because we pray it in your name. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for the fellowship that we're able to share. And as we leave this place, as we enjoy fellowship with each other, as we go out into the world, we pray indeed that you will go before us and you will prepare the hearts and the minds of those people that we meet so that we may be ready to listen to your voice, ready to do your will, ready to indeed gather in that harvest that is ripe and plentiful for you. So send us, Lord, we pray. Be with us, Lord, we pray. Help us, we pray, Father God. Amen. 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 Praise God.
just to remind everyone, uh, there are refreshments being...